What's up everyone, welcome back. Moving on to the next topic, we're now gonna talk about how to find the sample size to reduce the margin of error. So, so far we've been given sample size and we have to find the margin of error or find a confidence interval. In this case, we're gonna be given a margin of error. We have to find that sample size. So to do a quick little review, we know that a confidence interval In general, it's equal to what? It's the sample mean plus or minus the margin of error. And if we want to decrease that margin of error or make that confidence interval more narrow, we can do three things. We could decrease the confidence percentage, increase the sample size, or we can know the population standard deviation. So what we're going to be focusing on in this video is this right here, increasing the sample size in order to get a certain margin of error. Now, if you remember, to get that margin of error, it depends on whether you know the population standard deviation or not. If you know it, you're going to use the Z distribution. If you don't know, you use the T distribution. So let's assume that we know what the population standard deviation is going to be. Then we know that the margin of error is going to be the z value at alpha over 2 because it's going to be a two-tailed probability, right, confidence interval, multiplied by the standard deviation, the population standard deviation over the square root of n, like that. So that's what the margin of error is going to be when we know the population standard deviation, and I went over that in previous videos. So notice what we can do here now is we could combine these. So this is like over one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write Z alpha over two. And then we got um, the standard deviation over the square root of N. And then this is going to be the margin of error. And let's put this over one. So now what we're going to do is we're going to solve or we're going to isolate for this sample size over here because now what we want to do is find out what the sample size is going to be given a certain margin of error. So what we could do is we could cross multiply here so we'd have margin of error times the square root of n equals 1 times this numerator. So it's going to be the z value alpha over 2 times the standard deviation. And then to isolate for this n here, the sample size, we'll have the square root of n equals both sides divided by the margin of error, right, to bring that over. So we'd have the z alpha over 2, we'd have the standard deviation all over the margin of error. But notice this is the square root of n. Right? And we want n by itself. So what we would have to do is we would have to square both sides to get that n by itself. So then we'll have n equals, and when we have an exponent on the outside, uh, if you remember from math, basically, let's say you have like a, b over c to the power of x then everything in the numerator, everything in the denominator goes to that power. So we'd have a to the x, b to the x, over c to the x. So if we apply that here, basically this z value, alpha over 2, would be squared. Um, the standard deviation would be squared. And then the margin of error that we're given would be squared as well. And so that is the formula. If we're given a certain margin of error, we're given a population standard deviation, and we know that we know the confidence percentage, we could find out what that z value is, whether through the table or through the calculator, and then we could solve for that n value using this formula over here. Now, what if we don't know the population standard deviation? Well, in fact, to use this formula, we actually have to know what the population standard deviation is. Because if we don't know it, then this is going to be a t value, 
so we would use the t distribution but the problem is if you remember the t distribution it actually depends on the sample size on the n because there's multiple ones depending on the degrees of freedom right degrees of freedom is n minus one so that's why there's no real way to isolate for this n here with a t distribution because the t distribution would also depend on the n versus the z distribution there's only one z distribution it doesn't depend on that n value so this value is always going to be the same here right so you can only actually use this when you know the population standard deviation so let's do an example to show how all of this works so let's say you're looking at home prices in a certain country the population standard deviation for the home prices is 52,000 from a sample of 93 homes, the mean and standard deviation is $310,000 and $61,000, respectively. And there's two questions. Number one, we got to find a 95% confidence interval. And then number two, what sample size is required to reduce the margin of error by 25% for a 95% confidence interval? So for number one, to find that 95% confidence interval, I'm just going to use the stats calculator. You can also do this manually. I've done videos before in the chapter where we calculated the confidence interval manually. But because we've already done examples of that, I'm gonna do it quickly with a calculator. Number two is really what I wanna focus on because that's the new topic, how to find the sample size to reduce the margin of error. So to find the 95% confidence interval with this information, you go to the main menu, you go stat, then you hit F4 for interval. And then F1, because we're going to be using the Z distribution. Now, why are we going to be using the Z distribution? Because the population standard deviation is given. And then you would hit F1 again, because we're going to be doing it for one sample. So when you get here, the data is going to be variable. That's what you want to input. Confidence level, 95%. So this would be 0.95. The population standard deviation is 52,000. The sample mean, we're told it's 310,000. And we took this from a sample of what? 93 homes. So N is 93. And when you execute that in the calculator, you would end up getting this interval over here. So I rounded it to the nearest dollar. So the 95% confidence interval would be $299,432 to $320,568. And notice this is the interval here. And we can find what the margin of error is if we want. If you remember, how do we do that? Well, we take the difference between these two numbers and then divide it by 2. And when you do that, you'd get a margin of error of 10, 5, 6, 8. And the reason why you need that is because you need it for number two. Because notice we're saying that we're going to reduce the margin of error by 25%. So we have to know what the original margin of error was. So that there is the answer to number one. And then this margin of error we're going to use for number two. So this confidence interval, it's also like the sample mean plus or minus that margin of error right there. Right? So number one is complete. And so for number two now, the margin of error, the original is 10, 5, 6, 8. But what they're saying in number two is that they want to take that margin of error and decrease it even further to have a more narrow confidence interval. Say that, so they want to reduce it by 25%. So what we would do is we have to find a new margin of error. And if we decrease something by 25%, it's like we're taking this and multiplying it by 0.75. So decreasing this by 25% is the same thing as 75% of that. So when you do that, you'd end up getting a new margin of error of 7,926. So that's the margin of error that we are aiming for in number two. And you could have also got this number by taking 25% of that, 10,568, 
and then subtracting that amount from 10,568 to get that, right? Either way works. So now they're asking what sample size is required to reduce the margin of error by 25% or for the margin of error to be that right there for a 95% confidence interval. So what we wanna do here, uh, I'm gonna erase this, I'll just remember the number, is we wanna use that formula that I introduced at the beginning of the video, which is basically the Z value of alpha over two times the population, or sorry, squared, the population standard deviation squared all over the margin of error squared. Now, since we're dealing with a 95% confidence interval, then we know that alpha is 0 0.05, right? Alpha is the one minus the confidence percentage. So what we're gonna be looking for is the Z value at 0 0.025, right? Which is alpha over two. 0 0.05 over two is 0 0.025. Now, and then this is squared there. And then um, the population standard deviation is 52,000. We're gonna be squaring that. And then the margin of error that we're trying to get to is 7,926 and we have to square that as well. And then to get this Z subscript 0 0.025, you'd basically look up either in the Z table or do with your calculator. You're looking for Z of 0 0.025, which means that this area here is 0 0.025. Right, so you can look that up in the table. So you'd look up in the table for the area to the left of a certain z-score. So this area here, if this is 0 0.025, then this is 0 0.975. So you'd look up 0 0.975 and the z-score you'd get is 1.96. I have a whole section on how to do this with the table and with the calculator. So if you're not comfortable getting this Z value for a 95% confidence interval, highly recommend you go and watch that. So that is the Z value, right? And so all you have to do now is plug all of that in the calculator. And when you do that in the calculator, you would end up getting an N value of 166. It's actually like 165.3 something, but you can't take 0.3 of a home. So you usually take the number and round it up, right? So even though it was 165.3, we still have to round it up because 165 would not give us that margin of error. We have to have at least that margin of error. So we round up the sample size. Answer is 166. So what does that mean? It means that for this scenario, we have to take a sample size, we have to increase the sample size from 93 to 166 in order to reduce that margin of error by 25% or to get that, uh, that margin of error to $7,926.